guys, how are you? Welcome to the Pure Motivation Podcast Show. I'm your host, Dimitri Giancoulis, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the three key components when it comes to performance nutrition. Now, when we talk about performance nutrition, what are we really saying? Are we talking about eating for an athletic purpose? Are we talking about what athletes eat? Are we talking about eating so you can only perform at a certain level? Or can we break down performance nutrition into small, um, light-sized nuggets that the average population can understand and actually utilize with their lifestyle? The one key thing that I noticed in my 28 years of helping people you know, lose fat, build muscle, maintain their lifestyle, improve their health, is when it comes to nutrition, there's such a, a fear. There's the, well, I'm not really sure I'm eating properly, can you tell me what to eat approach, which doesn't work. Anytime you go to a fitness coach and you ask them to tell you what to eat, they can't just give you a piece of paper and say, here, follow this. Because if they do that, you're basically following a diet, you're memorizing something to eat for a certain period of time, and because you don't understand the basis, you're probably gonna break down and have failures throughout that. Because you can't just follow something when it's not customized to you. Another approach is where someone can actually sit down with you, take a reading of what you've been eating, analyze it, and then give it back to you based on your body type, your goals, your fitness level, and so forth, which is probably the most uh, popular method that a lot of people use. I use that method as well. But lately, as I'm dealing with men over 40, and as I'm dealing with you know people in my fitness studio here in Vaughan, and I'm teaching them how to eat, and I'm dealing with couples, and I'm dealing with kids, I noticed there's three main um, pieces or, or, or ingredients when it comes to people understanding nutrition, separate from the macronutrients of knowing what a protein, carbon, fat is. Um, and these three areas of performance nutrition are crucial, not just for an athlete. It could be for your mom and dad, who's in their 60s and 70s, that is trying to, you know, get healthier because they got high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high visceral tissue. This can be for the dad that's working, you know, 40, 50 hours a week that doesn't like his dad bod, that wants to make changes. This can be for the mom that's trying to lose weight and become healthy for her kids. So in order to live a longer and healthier lifestyle, you want to make sure you put time and energy into understanding the three components of performance nutrition. So they are food type, they are food timing, and they are food amount. I'm gonna break them down one for one for you so you can kind of understand them. And then dieting and nutrition should not be such a stressful period of your life. Because if no one ever gave you a diet ever again, and no one ever gave you a macronutrient booklet again, if you just focus on trying to eat based on these three criterias, things will be really, really easy for you, okay? So let's start it off. Food type. Now, food type refers to what actual food you're eating. Now, forget the goal you have, forget your fitness level, forget your past failures, forget the trauma that you're carrying with you from 10, 15 years ago where you got picked on, you were bullied, you had a binging disorder, whatever it is, forget it. Just try to break down food for its natural instinct, okay? So food type refers to what actual food types you're eating. So do you understand your macronutrients? When you're talking about dieting, do you understand what a protein carbon fat is? If you don't know, you don't understand the food type. So you'll be lacking in one of the three areas. Do you understand what nutrient rich dense foods are? So for example, are you eating an apple or a granola bar? Okay, are you having chicken breast or chicken fingers? Okay, so the food type you're eating matters when it comes to weight loss, muscle gain. Are the foods you're eating highly processed or are they in natural form? Okay, a lot of parents say, what can I give my kids to drink? Can I give them orange juice? Can I give them apple juice? Well, orange juice is gonna be highly processed versus giving your kid an orange to eat. Okay, making sure that if you're giving them some type of food or you're consuming the food, has it been mass produced? Has it been broken down from its natural form, okay? Other examples are meats, dairies, and veggies. Are you eating organic or non-organic food sources, okay? Main difference, pesticides, all the different um, things that they spray on food sometimes don't get cleaned off. Sometimes they're, they're you know, biologically 
um, making foods, you know, that are not nutritious for you. And even when you're looking at salmon and different fishes and different foods, um, some people take the organic mix to a high level. Some people are very comfortable with eating normal foods. Um, are you reading the labels on your foods? Does it say low fat? And is it added low, is it added in high sugar? Or are you just picking something that you just see that says, you know, healthy for you? And are the foods you're eating high or low in the glycemic index? Okay, the glycemic index refers to the rate of your blood sugar or the, the ability for your blood sugar to spike after a two hour period of eating food. Okay, so if you're looking at, let's say a white potato versus a sweet potato, the white potato will have a higher glycemic um, index response compared to the sweet potato or the yam, okay? Now, so food type is gonna refer to the actual foods you're eating. Just think of, I'm dieting, Dimitri's giving me a new way to look at this, I'm looking at food type. Next, food timing. To me, this is probably one of the most important aspects when it comes to performance nutrition or even general nutrition because food timing refers to the frequency of your meals throughout the day. We're talking, or for an athletic purposes, your pre-workout and your post-workout exercise nutrition. So how often, how often are you eating throughout the day? Um, are you having big gaps of meals? So some people may have breakfast at 7 a.m. and then they don't eat till dinner or they won't eat till four o'clock. So that big gap in your day causes your blood sugar to crash. If your blood sugar crashes, you're not gonna have as much energy. Your mood's disrupted. You're gonna be highly susceptible to getting things or wanting things that are high sugar. You're not gonna crave a nice salad and chicken breast and some grapes on top of it. You're gonna crave a burger or a chocolate bar or a candy bar because of that long duration of time. Are you balancing your blood sugar throughout the day? Are you eating foods typically between every three to four hour period, okay? Are you eating breakfast? Do you eat snacks throughout the day? Um, because if you're not eating breakfast and you're not having snacks, what's happening is you're just dumping food in at big quantities at different times of the day. So now your body doesn't really understand what's happening here. Today's Monday. I missed breakfast, the person's fasting. They had a big lunch and a big dinner. Tuesday comes around. They had a coffee and a bagel. So the boy's confused. Are we fasting? Or are we having a coffee and a bagel? Lunchtime kicks in, they miss their meal. Okay, the body's like, well, what are we doing today? Are we fasting, storing, gaining? Dinner comes, they overconsume calories. So you see that nutrition isn't as easy as a one, two, three fix. There's a few different variables you want to look at. Um, are you eating because you're bored? Are you eating because you're lazy? Are you eating because it's the time that you typically will eat? Are you uh, planning around your lifestyle habits? Like typically people will come home from work, they'll have dinner, and then they'll sit down and watch TV. And then what ends up happening around 9.30, between 9.30 and I would say 11.30, they're looking at um, having snacks because of the fact that they're just hungry. Well, being hungry is one thing, but is there a reason why you're hungry? Is it because you didn't eat properly throughout the day? You missed your snack, you missed your lunch, and now that dinner that you had is not enough to supply you with good fuel? So, um, food timing is important. Another one is, are you providing your body with proper energy and macronutrients pre-exercise, during exercise, or post-exercise? So the timing is important. Here's an example. Let's say I'm an ectomorph and I'm trying to put on muscle, I'm trying to get stronger, and I'm working out at 9 a.m. But before I work out, I just had, let's say, some nuts, okay? Nuts are a great fuel, they're gonna give me some slow duration of energy, but it's not quick. My workout's at 9, I'm eating some nuts at 8.30, by the time I go for my workout, I don't have fuel in me, my body's sluggish, I don't have the energy, and then as soon as I'm done my workout, I have two bananas, so I'm ready to go and I'm in a rush. So, slow fuel before the workout, not enough to supply my body with the proper carbs it needed during the workout. When I'm done the workout, I spiked up high in blood sugar because I had two bananas, I never had no protein to replenish the muscle tissue that I just broke down, and I also never had another fat source to kind of balance all my three macros out. So, the timing is important of when you eat a meal. Some body types can handle this, some body types cannot, especially the endomorphic body type. If the endomorphic body type goes for a long periods of time without eating, 
And if you time the, prop, the body properly, fasting works best with that body type. But if you're looking at having proper energy and you're supposed to work out at lunchtime and you miss breakfast and you never had any snack before lunch, your performance during that lunchtime workout will be compromised due to the fact that the timing of your food was off, okay? So we went through food type. Do you actually know what type of foods you're eating? Are they nutrient dense? Are they healthy foods? Are they natural foods? Are they processed foods? Do you know your macronutrients? We went through food timing, which is the second component. What time are you eating throughout the day? Are you heavy loading in the morning with a big breakfast, bagel, eggs, bacon, some peanut butter, a um, glass of milk or a double double coffee? Are you eating so much for breakfast that your body's so full that you don't need nothing for later on? When in reality, if you're trying to burn body fat, you wouldn't need the carbs for breakfast. You might not even need the breakfast depending on how heavy you are and what your daily activity is like. So food timing is important. And then lastly is food amount, the third portion of performed nutrition. Now food amounts, pretty simple, refers to the amount of actual food you're eating per sitting um, of calorie and serving size, okay? So did you ever ask um, or even research how much food you eat in a day? A lot of people don't really know this question. And are you eating when you're hungry or are you eating when food's served? So when a lot of people come to me and they say, listen, I need help with my diet. Can you give me a diet? Well, how can I give you a proper recommendation of what you're eating if I A, don't know what times of the day you eat, B, if I have no clue the total amount of food you have per day, C, I don't know, you know, what quantity, what sizes are you having, you know, foods that are not macronutrient balanced? Are you having an egg omelet for breakfast and that's it? I meet people who have an omelet for breakfast, no vegetables, no fat on the side, just eggs. That's a meal that's missing vegetables from your carbohydrates and healthy fats. Um, there's dangers and consequences to, to of eating too little or too much for each body type. So when it comes to food amount, if you're looking at the ectomorphic body type, which is mine, if you're eating too little, you can burn muscle tissue through your workouts. You can actually lose weight in starting a training program if you're not fueling your body properly. If you're looking at someone that's mesomorphic in genetic type or endomorphic that builds muscle very quickly, that's got a medium to slow metabolism, especially for people just starting off who are trying to lose weight, if their carbohydrates are still high, for example, Sal, one of my clients, he's dropping down weight at a slow pace. He probably could be dropping at a pace of two pounds per week because of his genetics, because of the workouts we're doing, but he's constantly having too many carbs throughout the morning and lunchtime. When in reality, he doesn't need to have a bagel for breakfast. He doesn't need to have two slices of bread with his lunch, right? So there's dangers to eating too much foods because you'll bulk up too quickly, especially women that are listening or watching. You'll notice that when you work out, you say, hey, why am I bulking up really quickly? This program's not working for me, but it's not the program. It's the fact that you're eating too many carbs. Okay, um, are you eating too much of one macronutrient? Are you eating a high protein diet with no carbs alone? A lot of people will follow high protein diets because they know that protein gives you satiety, it helps build muscle tissue, it helps build your immune system, it helps your metabolism, but they're forgetting that you need carbohydrates to live. High protein diet with no carbohydrates results in people losing muscle tissue very quickly. And when they're saying, well, why am I losing muscle even though I'm even high protein diet? It's because your body requires carbohydrates for energy source. You also need fat as a primary energy source as well. So by not mixing and matching the macros throughout the day and not paying attention to the food amount you're eating, that can cause havoc to you. Um, are you missing or deficient in macronutrients when you're eating a meal? So let's say someone's having chicken and they're having salad and they don't, they're afraid to put fat on. They don't want to put nuts on, they don't want to put avocado, they don't want to put olives, cheese, olive oil, and they're trying to eat too light. Too light. Eating too light does not mean you're going to lose weight because let's say, for example, your total daily energy um, 
your expenditure is 2,500 calories and you want to go in a caloric um, deficit and you're having 500 calories less, even 600 calories, you're having 1,900 calories. Well, if you're having 1,900 calories and the calories you're having are solely protein and vegetables, you're not having carbs throughout the day to give you energy, even starchy carbohydrates, you will plateau in your weight loss. And by restricting the amount of food you eat, your body will naturally understand that, hey, I'm not eating enough. I'm on a desert island. I'm stuck somewhere. I'm not able to eat enough. So I'm going to slow down my basal metabolic rate. I'm going to slow down my energy. So I'm not going to cons- it's not going to burn as much energy. I'm not going to consume or expend as much energy. Well, that's not good because the minute your metabolism slows down, weight loss goes to a halter. Doesn't matter how active you are throughout the day. So very important. Also, if you're fasting, let's talk about food amount. Some people are fasting. Some people do it properly. Some people don't do it properly. Some people are fasting by not eating within a certain window of the day. They may fast for 16 hours and then they may eat from like 12 or 12 to 6 or 12 to 8, whatever the time period may be. And then some people are fasting too long and they're waiting till 2 o'clock and they're eating from 2 till 6. So a tiny window, then they have the whole day where they're not eating. So you got to be careful when it comes to that. And then weight loss and weight gain all has to do with the thermogenic effect of food in terms of calories in and calories out. Are we getting a positive energy balance or a negative energy balance? Okay, or neutral energy balance. So for example, um, the person is working out every day, burning calories, this many calories per day, they're exercising and they're eating this many calories per day. So you have expenditure versus consumption. They meet, that's gonna be a maintenance. Doesn't matter who your trainer is, that doesn't matter if it's a HIIT program, if it's a colossal program, German volume training, doesn't matter what it is. Whatever you burn, you consume, so you stay the same. Natural, natural, natural nutrition 101. Second example, you're burning specific calories, but you're constantly eating or consuming more than your body needs. That is gonna be a weight gain scenario. Now, it doesn't matter if you're an ectomorph, endomorph, mesomorph, it'll be harder to gain weight with the first body type. But if you're constantly overeating the amount of calories you need, your body's naturally gonna gain weight. And then the hardest and most challenging thing is the caloric deficit, which people struggle with because they just don't understand that if you don't log your food and you don't track it, you'll never know what you're eating per se. So you may think you're eating healthy, but you're eating 2,000 calories a day. Your body needs 1,600 calories a day. You've got 400 extra. You're not going to lose weight. But if your body needed 2,000 per day and you said, I'm going to eat 1,500 per day, that's 500 less per day. 500 calories times seven days in a week is 3,500 calories. That should be one pound of fat lost just from dieting alone. Forget working out. So when it comes to nutrition, don't stress yourself out. My time is going off. Don't overthink nutrition. But if you want to break it down, you want to think of the three areas of performance nutrition once you've been training for a while, once you've been training on a regular basis. Maybe if you're hitting a plateau, maybe if you see that things aren't really changing, go back to these three different topics of food type, referring to the actual types of foods you're eating, food timing, How frequent throughout the day are you eating? How spaced apart are your meals? How dense are they? Is your dinner really, really dense compared to your breakfast? And then the food amount is the actual serving size. Am I having a cup of rice at lunchtime or having just a plateful? When I go for dinner, do I tell the chef or the restaurant or the waiter coming by, do me a favor, just give me one cup of rice with my meal, give me extra salad and give me some chicken on the side. Do you tell your waiter this? Or do you take the order that they bring you that's got half a place of rice and potatoes, half a plate of salad and some protein, and then you're stuck looking at this big plate and saying, what am I gonna do? Hope you enjoyed this tip when it comes to health and fitness. Um, The three components of performance nutrition is something that a lot of people don't know. I hope this tip helped you out. If it did, please do me a favor, share with any friends, family, coworkers, even the person you don't like. You never know, they may come around sometime and be nice to you. But again, that's it for today. When it comes to health and fitness, your attitude is everything. Remember that, peace.